This Veterans History Project interview is being conducted on Wednesday, September the 15th in the year 2010 here at the Niles Public Library. My name is Neil O'Shea and I'm speaking with Mrs. Martha Marty uh, Barsky. Um, Mrs. Barsky has uh, graciously uh, consented to be interviewed for this project and she was uh, a WAVE associated with the Navy and she's uh, just our second lady to be interviewed. Um, and so now we're going to begin uh, her story. Um, I have to ask you, Mrs. Barsky, you were born on? June 28, 1924. June 28, 1924. And do you recall when you entered the military service? I enlisted on August 1st, 1944. August 1st, 1944. Oh, you brought this with, huh? Oh, okay. That's a release from the Navy, I yeah. guess. Accompanying uh, Marty today at the interview, I should have mentioned, is her husband, uh, Mr. Robert Barsky, and he has also uh, been interviewed for purposes for the Veterans uh, History Project. So that's the uh, helpful voice you may hear in the background. Um, do you recall where you were living at the time? Where I was? Yeah. Living. Um... In Chicago. No. No. <clears throat> Elm Elmwood Park. No, yeah, it was Chicago. In Chicago. Right. Had you graduated from high school at that time or Yes, Foreman High School. Oh Foreman, over there on uh, Belmont Avenue, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. And um yeah, I lived at uh, Fullerton and um near Laramie. We lived there about thirty years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so in August, before, say that in that summer of 1944, before you entered the service, what were you doing? Were you working or? I worked at Mills Novelty Company where they made slot machines. And then when the war broke out or, or when we got actively, uh, when we got active in the war, they switched over to making shelves, five, five inch shelves. And uh, that's where I met Bob. I was a factory mail girl, which was one of my first jobs. And uh, I used to walk around with pigtails and a jumpsuit. <laughs> the fellas would tell him, there's a nice girl for you. And he says, that kid? <laughs> but we, uh, we got acquainted. And uh, he met me um, one time at the Merchandise Mart when they had a program, especially for the Mills Novelty people. And I was with my mother all dressed up. And when he saw me, he realized I wasn't such a kid. And uh, from then on, well, that was our life. And that would, was that was that in 1944 or, that, or uh, probably 43. 43. When I met him. Yeah. So you met Bob in 43. I would say so. Yeah. So um, now, in the case of the most of the people we interview are men, of course, and, and they're they they either you know were drafted or they went down and enlisted or tried to join up or whatever. But in your case, you weren't required to go into the into service. But you did go into the service, so how did you decide to, to enlist? I always wanted to be a nurse. And at that time, you had to go to college for four years to be a nurse. And I didn't want to wait that long because I became engaged to Bob, and I figured we'll be getting married as soon as we get together again. And uh, so I decided to join the Navy the hospital corps, and I did um, the nursing that I would have liked to do. And at that time, the nurses were kind of upset with the waves because they had to do the paperwork, and the waves did all the nursing. So. Uh, I was like a nurse. I would give injections, and my first 
job when I got there was um, autopsy. Wow. Which w really was kind of, uh, oh, how can I describe it? It was um, a lot for me to accept. Mm -hmm. Just a kid getting into the service, and here they put me on, on a, a hospital thing with the um, autopsy. So I had to go with the doctors and the nurses there, and as they would take the, the organs out, I had them marked down the, the weights. You never knew this. No. <laughs> So I had to mark down the weights of all the organs that were removed for for testing, and uh, that was quite an experience for me. I can imagine. And um, the hospital was for also dependents. So whether this man was a dependent or, or a, a veteran or. Um, what do you call them? I don't. I don't know. Yeah. But um, then, my my second job, that was the next day, I saw a baby born, which this was just so much to uh, take all at one time. But to go back, I had my boot camp at um, Bethesda, Maryland at the Bethesda Hospital, and uh, we, we had to, um, besides learning how to do all the <coughs> hospital things, <coughs> excuse me, we had to identify silhouettes <coughs> of ships, we had to learn how to march, and stand in line for a child. <laughs> Real Navy, and uh, we had, I think it was six weeks, <clears throat> we had calisthenics, and um, in that six weeks we had one uh, leave off the base when I went to New York, and uh, I don't recall how I got there or who I went with. But I know uh, we went to the Empire State Building, and then we went dancing to the Roosevelt Hotel. Very nice. And I don't remember how we ate or what we ate in between times or how we got back to, to the hospital. I don't know why I don't remember those things, but um, it was. <laughs> 65 years or indeed, so. Indeed, indeed, yes, yeah. Um, so were you and Bob uh, engaged or planning to be engaged when you entered the, the waves? Yeah, we got engaged uh, before he went in the service. Yeah, and then were you able to exchange letters or was that pretty difficult? Oh, yeah. yeah. We corresponded together and uh, I always <laughs> sealed his letters with a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> you what? With a kiss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lipstick kiss. Beautiful. And uh, I thought that he was going to come to um, California at one time where I was stationed at Oakland Hospital. So you went to the, the, the training in Bethesda and then you wound up being posted to, to California? Right. Yeah. And uh, I thought, uh, he told me that they were going to be in California, and uh, I thought we might get married at that time, but uh, I don't know whether he never came or any, whatever reason. But on the way, we were in a train from New York to California to my duty, and um, I never slept on a train because I think we got to Colorado. We got to Colorado at night. 
whatever it was. And I never saw a mountain. Oh. Well, I stayed awake the whole night looking at the magnificent scenery. And uh, it was really something. And I don't remember whether we were picked up or what happened, how I got to the hospital, to my base. It was the Oak Knoll Naval Hospital in Oakland, California. Oh, Oakland, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then how long were you stationed there? The whole time. The whole time. And, and were, you in a, were you assigned to a particular unit? like? I was there from... Um, September 20th, 1944, until I think it was, um, let's see, uh, April something. April 46? Yeah, until April 46. Mm -hmm. I was there the whole time. Yeah. So did you, was that the first time you were ever away from home? Yes. So that was interesting, and then probably meeting, seeing, seeing different parts of the country and meeting people from all different parts of the United States, I would imagine. Yeah, that's the first time. Yeah. And uh, I enjoyed the train ride, and I had a compartment all by myself, but the bed, there was a toilet in there and a wash basin. But you couldn't use it when the bunk was down. <clears throat> you had to get out of the compartment <clears throat> and put the bunk up and then use it, use the toilet. It was so small. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of hard to do. But I guess you get used to all those little inconveniences. So in the waves, did, did they have ranks? of off Were you like an officer or a... Do they, they don't have privates in the waves, do they? they uh, well, we we had to learn how to salute. Yeah, and then did you have like a title, like a particular? I didn't have a title. I just my well, actually, my title was uh, H. A. Deuce when I uh, enlisted, and I was just H. A. First class when I left. And then H. A. Does that refer to like hospital assistant or something, or do you yeah. think? Yeah. Hospital corpsman. First class and you came. Corpsman, okay. Then, after my first couple days uh, with the baby births and the, and the um, what did what I say it was? The autopsies, autopsies and the organ identification, yeah. yeah. They put me um, in a treatment center. And there I would change the bandages for the boys that were in the hospital area. And uh, there was one a young man in particular, I can even remember his name, was Oxentine, very odd name. But anyway, he was a Marine, and he was out wherever he was for so long that he never was able to take his shoes off. So when he came back to the hospital, Oh, his toes had grown together. Oh dear! So my job was to bathe his feet and massage his feet and get his toes separated and get rid of all the dead skin. And he he had a wound in his stomach that uh, his whole insides were practically exposed and he would smoke and the smoke would come out of his stomach and of course in those days smoking was permitted anywhere everybody on the ward was smoking and um, that's an experience that I'll never forget and he must have weighed about 90 pounds and uh, Several months later, I met him on the base, and he had gained weight, and he looked like a million, and I was so happy to see that he recovered. Wow. Yeah. Did his toes ever straighten out? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I took care of that. 
and uh, he must have appreciated what you did for him, I suppose. Well, he never said anything. Yeah. I mean, that was my job. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and it was it was payment to see him recover. Very nice yeah. young man, and. Uh, those are a couple of the experiences that I'll never forget. Oh, sure. So you must have been there for about a year at that hospital, would you say? A year? Yeah. Oh, no, it's more than a year. Yeah. A, a like year and a half. A year least. and a half, yeah. A year and nine months, I think. Almost two years. So was were the did you have nice living conditions, a apartment or base or Yeah, I was lucky enough to get a lower bunk. <laughs> I didn't like climbing up in the top bunk. And uh we lived on um um dormitory and we could have visitors. In fact, uh I had several visitors. My cousin came to see me, him who was in the Navy and I don't know where he was stationed. I don't remember that. And then there was a friend of the family's. He was an officer. And he took me to dinner one time. And a member of my grandfather's family uh, came to visit me. I don't know how he even knew I was there. And. Uh, so I had a few visitors in that time, and it was kind of nice. Did you have to, um, who was your boss? A nurse by the name of Magnuson. And she was a very nice person. And uh, we got along real well. And... Uh, she didn't do anything special for me, but uh, she was just very nice. Yeah. So, would you're, would, like a normal day, did you have normal days? Like you'd start at 9 and go to 5, or it was whatever it was needed, or it depended, your hours? Of well, they were pretty normal days, except uh, we had to have a uh, watch which um, I had a wa watch where, I don't know why, maybe the person was dying, I don't remember, but I had to sit there for a couple hours in her room at night, and um, I remember dozing off, and the nurse on the ward came in, and I jumped up, and I said, I wasn't sleepy. <laughs> well, I, I really was, but... Uh, you're not supposed to sleep on watch, <laughs> but that's hard not to do, you know. Yeah. Did any of the, um, did the Navy have any hospitals overseas where they might have sent waves? If I took a course to become a chief, I don't know, not a chief, but a higher rating, they would have sent me overseas. They they asked me if I wanted to go to Pearl Harbor or wherever they were going to send me, and um, I didn't want to bother. I wanted to come home. Yeah. So, because uh, I figured Bob will get off around the same time that I will, and we'll be getting married. So. Yeah. This June, it'll be 65 years that we're married. Congratulations, yeah. <laughs> wow. A lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm only married 30 years, so. 30? Yeah, I got a long way oh, to go. Oh, you're just a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm learning all the time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, so that helped to keep uh, both of you going during those war years because you had a, you had a future in mind. You, had, you were planning yeah. on getting married, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I did my nursing that I wanted to do, and uh, it kind of came in handy in my life. And uh, when I got out of the Navy, I went back to the Mills Novelty Company, and they put me in the records department, so I didn't have to walk around in the factory with the mail anymore. But uh, I didn't stay there that long because I got pregnant and, uh, well, that was 
the end of my career for a while. Yeah. Did you have any trouble getting housing when you got married after the war? No. <laughs> we, we couldn't find a place to live. There yeah. were no apartments or nothing. So my folks took us then. And we lived with them about a year. And then they bought a home in Elmwood Park. And we finished off a room in the attic where we lived for about another year and a half. Then we uh, moved into Niles after, oh, two and a half or three years living with the folks. And we bought this little house. <coughs> it was 11200 It was a two-bedroom, one bath. It had a utility room, a dining area, nice living room. It was really a nice home. And uh, we had the three children there. And uh, then they start building uh, in a farm right where the library is. And in the next block, we bought a, a house that they uh, were asking 21000 and we gave them a uh, half down payment on that. And uh, let's see, a couple years ago, that house was selling for over $400,000. Wow. And of course, today, maybe 300000 maybe less. Yeah, the market's dropped a bit now. Yeah. yeah. Did you meet any, um, after the war, did you stay in touch with any of the other lady waves that you met? No, I didn't. Uh, for some reason, everybody was just so busy in their own way. We never hung around together. They were all going every which yeah. direction, you know. So you don't. So there aren't too many wave reunions or anything like that. Or there what? I say there aren't too many wave reunions. You know, the guys always have their reunions. Yeah. But the the ladies, maybe it's not the same. Well, thing. that's because they're so close on yeah. the ship. Yeah. There's not much they could do, you know, but socialize. But the girls now, they, uh, I don't know, it was different situation. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you may have mentioned this already. Um, how do you think your wartime experiences affected your life? Well, when we lived in our little house, um, his parents lived a couple blocks down the street. And uh, they had a friend who... Uh, whose husband was uh, dying of cancer. And uh, my mother-in-law asked me if I would go over there and give him a shot because he was in severe pain. So I knew how to do that. I had to give shots when I was in the service, take blood, do different things. So I went over there. And uh, I did give him the shot, and uh, he was critically ill, but in a, a couple of days he passed away, and I always wondered if the shot that I gave him had anything to do with him dying, but I don't think so, because he was already very critical. Yeah. So that was one experience, and then Bob... Um, went through cancer treatment for six months, and uh, I think my experience in the Navy kind of helped home through. I'm sure. With um, nutrition, different things. Yeah, and then being a mom, right, and the three. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm sure came mm -hmm. in handy when you're. So I had the little three people. children. Yeah. And my son 
uh, had a brain tumor at 48 years old, and uh, he passed away. And I really miss him because we used to play golf together, and uh, he was a good friend. Yeah. And um, my other daughter is um, in Washington State, and then I have another daughter in Hoffman State. But um, she comes in about usually once a year, checking up on the old folks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all we always ask the the vets, the the, the men, uh, at the end of the interview, we ask them how they think, how their experience during the war years might have affected their outlook on war. Do you think you? The outlook? Your, yeah, your thoughts about war as a result of you having been kind of involved I, in the I can't, yeah. I can't read about the war. It's too depressing. It's too, uh, it's too hurtful. I'm sure. Unnecessary, and I can't see why they can't take care of their own countries. Yeah. Why we have to go in there? Yeah. And uh, the war that I was in was a real war, and being so young, it didn't affect me that much. Mm -hmm. It was just a a thing that was happening, you know, and I was helping out the best I could. But today, what's going on is just, uh, I can't handle that. Yeah, yeah. So, we're coming to the end of the interview. Is there anything you'd like to add or that you recall a particularly uh, funny situation or memorable situation or where you were when you heard the news that the war was over or... No, I, I can't recall those things. I, I don't know why. Uh, I remember Pearl Harbor, and, yeah, but wow. I don't remember yeah. the end of the war or uh, why I was uh, dismissed or yeah. anything like so that. So were you, were you formally dismissed in Chicago or in, or in Oakland? When you left, when you left your your final like day, was it we were discharged? Were you discharged? Yeah, when I was discharged, I went to uh, back to Chicago back where to I Chicago. left. Back to Chicago, yeah. And um, that was Bob met me at Midway Airport because O'Hare wasn't built yet. Oh, so you flew back. What's that? You flew back from San Francisco, did you? Were from Oakland. Yeah. You didn't have to come back by train and no. stay awake just Do you all remember night. that? No. I don't yeah. remember any of all this. I had never heard this before. Good yeah. stuff, huh? Yeah, he picked, picked me up, and that was my first flight. Wow. And uh, they didn't have, um, like, terminals or anything like that. Yeah. You had to get off the plane out in the open and walk to the gate or however it was. But O'Hare, and by the way, uh, did you know that O'Hare was named after Al Capone's son? His son? I thought it was named after Butch O'Hare. He changed his name because he was ashamed of his father's name. He didn't want to um, use uh, the name of Capone, and he was a big hero in the he world. He was. Big Congre hero. Congressional Medal of Honor. Yeah. He's yeah. a brave pilot. So they named O'Hare after him. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. Very interesting article yeah. I, I got in the computer. Yeah. So the computer keeps me busy these days. Oh, you're not afraid of the Internet. <laughs> no. no. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. 
It's no. amazing. I've had the computer um, now for about a year, and uh, I figured if we don't get one, we're going to really be up a creek because everything is computerized today. You're right. And I think it's, it's, um, it's good for staying in touch with, the, with family, you know, with the email and all that, you know. And then they can, people can send pictures of one another. Right. And then we have some people come in here, they, um, what do they talk about? Skype. If you have got a little camera on your computer, you can, like, type up there and then you can have a phone conversation, but you could see them using the little camera on your computer. There's this free program called Skype. I think it's like S-K-Y-P-E. My wife wants me to put on ours so that we can talk to our son in California. Yeah, but we haven't done it yet. I have that camera. Oh. And it, I have that capa excuse me, capability, but I don't know how it works, and you have to pay extra for that. Oh. And... Um, well, it's not that we're so cheap, but I don't think <laughs> I use it enough to make it worthwhile, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it just uh, yeah. wouldn't be worthwhile. So uh, Bob brings up the ship on the computer, and he takes, uh, he gets pictures and all kinds of stuff about the ship. Yeah, the... the the computer and the internet really helps me because um, when I interview the vets, you know, they they think I know all this stuff. They're, a lot of the stuff they're telling me, like these places and names and ranks and military shells and weapons. And you know, I might rem I might know it for like five seconds, but then I go back. So when I so when I work on the interviews, it really helps to have the internet. It's just amazing. Well, er every time he gets a new medication or I get a new oh, yeah. medication, I look it up, and he was very sick with vertigo at one time and the doctors we went to four different doctors and they couldn't figure out why he has this yeah and it was terrible he got sick to his stomach anyway I had a clue that maybe uh, he was allergic to MSG so I looked it up in the computer and the information that I got kind of verified this. Well, I guess the doctors were amazed that I diagnosed it when they couldn't. Very good. That was your med maybe that was your medical training again that could from World be. War Two. Yeah, yeah. So I, I looked up all the medications. Yeah. I don't eat in a restaurant unless I ask them, "Do you have MSG?" If they have that, I won't eat there. You know, yeah. Because I get I would get sick. Yeah. You know what that is, right? Mon monosodium yeah. glutamate yeah. or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sure we, we eat all kinds of funny preservatives and drug well, additives that we never would have eaten 100 years ago, you know? When we uh, would inquire, they don't know. We don't use it. Too many people are allergic to it. Yeah. So... Uh, they don't use it anymore. Mostly uh, Asian chops we and things. The Chinese restaurants, you yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, American restaurants don't don't use it. And he doesn't eat Chinese, so we don't have to worry. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've we've done a good job on all of the uh, on all the questions. Um, so as I say, was there anything you'd like to add, or uh, I can't think. It must of have anything. been great to see Bob at the airport, huh? <laughs> it must have been great to see Bob oh, at yeah, the airport. Oh yeah, we're oh, man. really happy to see each other. Yeah, it was a long time. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and yeah. sixty-five years later, here we are. She <laughs> might have got did better, but she got me. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, she's too young that way. Nah, nah. <laughs> I had a lot of boyfriends, but they're all dead. Oh, dear. So I'm glad I got here. He's still wrong. <laughs> so I think on that happy note, we'll, uh, we'll conclude the interview. Thank you very much, Marty. That's terrific.